For the last 75 years, there's been a vicious serial killer flying under the radar, despite its horrific and fatal results. This killer's full name is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, but it's better known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. There is no known cause or cure. It rapidly robs a person of the ability to walk, talk, and ultimately breathe while the mind remains fully intact and imprisoned. Unlike a virus or cancer, ALS is extremely difficult to diagnose because there's no blood test, MRI, or X-ray to actually see the disease. It is also challenging to predict how fast ALS will progress, and patients are only given two to five years to live. Every 90 minutes, someone is diagnosed, and every 90 minutes, someone loses their battle. Even with a rapid fatality rate, this disease goes largely unnoticed as the ALS patient population never grows. So unlike polio, HIV, or even autism, ALS has never had the benefit of becoming an epidemic that urges people to action. However, ALS did have its moment in the sun during the summer of 2014. The Ice Bucket Challenge was a worldwide phenomenon that raised awareness to an all-time high. It also raised over $100 million for the ALS Association. With all that money, scientists should find a cure any day, right? Not exactly, and here's why. Given the short life expectancy of ALS patients and the sporadic nature of the disease, scientists have a hard time even knowing where to start. Imagine that each ALS patient is a snowflake. That makes for an extremely unique, well-camouflaged moving target. Once a target is identified, scientists create a potential drug and the marathon begins. This is where all the industry players come in and a drug goes from petri dish to patient. First, you've got Big Pharma. These guys aren't really into the drug development business. They leave that up to small biotech firms and then gobble up those firms once they have a promising drug. Then there are biotech firms like ALS Therapy Development Institute, large advocacy and patient service entities like MDA and ALS Association, as well as universities and hospitals. Let's consider this scenario. Dr. Hope thinks she has a drug worth testing. First, she must do exhaustive preclinical research to test the safety of the drug. Once the preclinical research has been completed, Dr. Hope must design a clinical trial following the strict guidelines created by the FDA. Dr. Hope's clinical trial will have three phases. Phase one, approximately 50 healthy individuals are given different doses of a drug to determine adverse reactions and side effects. Phase two, this is typically done using a double blind method, meaning neither the participant nor the clinicians know who's receiving the real drug. Phase three, this is the largest and longest phase, testing for efficacy and adverse reactions. Only 25% of all drugs make it this far. It seems like a very straightforward process from 30,000 feet, but it's a much different operation on the ground. The first barrier is cash. Dr. Hope's preclinical research is a risky investment to fund, but a necessary piece of the puzzle. Before a single patient can be enrolled, Dr. Hope must submit her trial to the FDA. Since ALS is an orphan disease with unmet medical need, the FDA is required to reply within 90 days, but typically replies within 30 days. With a green light from the FDA, clinicians could start enrolling patients immediately if it weren't for the red tape. Each hospital has an Institutional Review Board, or IRB, that oversees clinical trial management, which can take nine months to approve. The next challenge is patient exclusion. Dr. Hope wants the healthiest ALS patients for her trial, so she doesn't have to worry about her subjects dying while enrolled in the study. To ensure this happens, clinical trials for ALS require that the patient onset of symptoms be within the previous 12 months. This is extremely frustrating because the average diagnosis for ALS happens 18 months after the first symptoms appear. These FDA-mandated guidelines haven't changed since the 1950s. They fail to fully commit or adapt to today's technology and patients' needs. When you add all of this up, the average drug takes 12 years to go from petri dish to patient and costs approximately $2 billion. This tenacious disease must be stopped, and that depends on the abilities of researchers to develop better theories, faster science, and a commitment to share information. And that takes money. ALS is not incurable. It's simply underfunded. 
Donate today.